Hey guys, welcome back to Crypto Hoy. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel where I do crypto reviews, updates, and even tutorials. In this video, I want to cover something that I find to be very intriguing from big guys. They're actually giving their take on the FTX drama that that has happened this month, uh, last week, and um, I just find it to be very interesting because of all the other tokens that I have covered, such as Tomododge, IMPT token, Toon Finance, and some other ones. Um, these right here are the only ones that I have seen at least so far that I'm aware of that they made an, a medium, an article to cover this story. And they actually add their take um, here at the very bottom. We see that they kind of share, you know, their take, their two cents about this, uh, about this uh, topic, about the situation, the story about FTX. And I promise you, it will surprise you. So make sure you guys watch this video till the end. And also, uh, why not give it a like if you like this uh, video, if you find this to be helpful and informative and unsubscribe if you haven't done so yet so you can help out this uh, channel to help us support it and I can keep making more videos and keep you guys informed and in the loop. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. I'll have the link for this medium also in the description down below if you guys want to go check it out and read it all. It's only like a five minute read and you can also listen to it right here. But I'm going to go straight to the point. I'm not going to cover the history of it. Um, many of you, um, I believe you guys are uh, familiarized with FTX about their story. But pretty much we're going to start where everything started. And it says here the one tweet that sparked it all. And it says in a shocking move. CZ announced that due to a recent revelation, they were selling all their FTX tokens, which totaled 7.4% of the total supply. This caused mass panic and unsurprisingly, FTX tokens value dropped 35% overnight. This is crazy. And um, in case you're wondering who CZ is, I believe most of you guys already know. Uh, let me see if I can just pull it up here real quick. So this is CZ. He's the CEO of Binance Exchange, okay, which is a very uh, huge, huge exchange worldwide. And so, um, yeah, so he just tweeted this and um, that they found some due to recent revelations. And what they found on the revelation was that on their books of uh, Al Alameda and FTX, there was uh, missing money, like billions of dollars, um, if I'm not wrong, and, um, you know, a significant amount. And that you know, just sparked, you know, some um, concern on uh, the CEO of Binance. And when he tweeted that also other people panic and they started to have like a little, that's when the bank run pretty much started, but there's more. It was then discovered that 41% of Alameda's assets were FTX tokens, leading many to predict that they would be the next crypto to crash and burn. Rumors also suggested that Alameda has sold their Bitcoins despite of a three year long agreement that they wouldn't. So they were pretty much breaching their contract and things were just getting worse for FTX. And then it says the drama last week, suddenly withdraw were paused. And this was causing a lot of confusion with people losing trust. And here it says that essentially CZ, which is the CEO of Binance, started a rumor that he was selling his FTX tokens watched as their value plummet and then bought the company to save them, quote unquote. Rumor has it that FTX value plummeted so badly that CZ bought them for a mere dollar. This is just insane, guys. It's like they kind of sparked the, the, you know, the bomb first, the issue first. Once it explodes, now they're like the savior. So they cost, well, they didn't, I, I don't, I don't think uh, the CEO or CZ from Binance, uh, he caused this. He just revealed it. Okay. Um, there was a gap. He took advantage of it. He revealed it like, hey, this is a major concern. People panic. And the same uh, person who sparked that or, you know, who brought it up to light is now the savior, quote unquote, for them and just bought them for just pennies on the dollar, which is just insane, guys. Just crazy how this story is. But there's more. OK. And then it says, believe it or not, the situation escalated even further. Another bombshell headline also hit FTX, FTX Group and Alameda Research all began filing for bankruptcy. Shockingly, FTX Group is composed of 130 affiliate companies. So this news was a huge blow to a lot of employees. This is just really massively bad 130 affiliate companies so i'm going to show you guys here um first of all who 
uh, SBF, who we were talking about here. Many of you guys, um, I believe you guys know uh, what's going on in this story, in this news. But in case you don't know, it's Sam Backman Freed. So that's his name. I hope I pronounced his second last name correctly. But yeah, so SBF, that is pretty much talking about this guy right here. Okay. Um, so this guy right here, he owns a lot of companies. So look at here the connections, okay, of FTX. So he's the founder of FTX. He had even uh, all these companies like Robinhood, Anthropic uh, investing on him. We even have celebrities, Tom Brady, Steph Curry, Giselle Bundek. Uh, I think that's how the last name is pronounced. Uh, Naomi Ots Ots Otsaka. Uh, and then Shoshay Otani, and look at all these uh, paradigm. Look at this, like Sequoia, like these big firms, investment firms. Okay, um, we have all these, uh, you know, other funds, uh, major investments, and all these companies all linked into FTX. And this is just a little piece. We have like so much more. Look at all this, the list. Okay, and you know, we were, and this is not even all of them. I believe there's uh, other ones. I believe, even if I'm not wrong, BlackRock was also involved or investing on FTX, which makes it crazy. And if you guys know anything about Black BlackRock, they're like a huge corporation company that owns like so many other, so many big companies that I don't remember at this moment on the top of my head but they own like a good portion of the world okay like all these uh companies but anyways uh you guys can research them um blackrock and you guys will see there's so many videos about them on youtube so you guys can go check it out but anyways let's go back here to the medium and keep going then in another suspicious move transactions were halted worldwide other than in the bahamas where sbf and a handful of his closest employees all lived and check this out this is where it gets even like more crazy all right it also transpired that he was dating the ceo of alameda research and lived in a 35 million house with over 200 million worth of land this situation just keeps getting messier so this paragraph right here is packed of information so it starts off saying that all the transactions were halted except in the bahamas where coincidentally SBF, which is the FTX uh, CEO or owner, uh, founder, happens to live with a handful of his closest employees. But on top of that, like a cherry on top, he was also dating the CEO of Alameda Research. And who is the CEO of Alameda Research? So let me just open that here right now. So this is right here where I'm kind of circling. So that's the CEO of Alameda uh, Research. And this right here is SBF, okay? Uh, Mr. Bank uh, Bankman Freed. And so they were pretty much having like, they were dating or something. And as we see here, FTX CEO and his girlfriend. Um, yeah, it's just very, very interesting. Very, very crazy how all of this just kind of went wild um yeah and so uh let's go back here to the to the medium and continue to make matters even worse for the crumbling company the entire ftx venture team walked out along with the legal and compliance team unfortunately this isn't the end of the drama buckle up for one of the biggest headlines yet so essentially people were just walking away from them turning their backs they you know felt betrayed uh, i I can, I can kind of you know uh, imagine that and that yeah they pretty much just wanted to end all type of links with ftx all these other venture companies or team and this is what happened as you see here highlighted what was next ftx got hacked but very in a very very convenient way let's check it out it says FTX was hacked of all of its funds. Its apps were infected with malware viruses and the website was also hacked. This means that whoever hacked the company would have needed access to the website, the apps and the wallets. It all seemed to point to one man who was chilling in the Bahamas. Hmm, very interesting. And check this out. Twitter was furious with people checking their FTX wallets and finding zero dollars. An SBF witch hunt started with all evidence pointing to one private jet allegedly tied to SBF that left the Bahamas the same night of that hack. They managed to track the aircraft all the way to Argentina. However, SBF has since disappeared. And we have this image here. I don't know if this is an actual image or they're just trying to illustrate, you know, what's going on here in these two paragraphs but man this is kind of becoming a movie i wouldn't be surprised if they kind of make a movie in netflix you know about this because this is just crazy and then we're still not done yet there's more then it says 
as a report then further incriminated SBF for the hack. This whole time he had a backdoor, quote unquote, to the company that gave him access to all the funds and financial records. This enabled him to maneuver finances without raising any alarms, putting him in the perfect position to hack the economy. This is just like, I don't know. This just seems very, very messed up to whoever trusted this guy. Um, at this point, he's not hes not just a fraudster. He's also a con artist. He was able to gain the confidence um, of a lot of people and kind of run away with their money at this point. And there was like so many YouTube videos about this guy on FTX. And he was a very uh, billionaire giving out money, driving like this Toyota. Um, and it's just crazy. And now it ends up that he pretty much and ends up you know screwing everybody running away with their money when everybody decided to bank run now when the water recedes now you get to see you know who's naked in the in the in the ocean you know i forgot who came up with that saying that you only see once the water recedes from you know the pool you know you really get to see who is covered and who's not covered very interesting and really really sad uh, you know for all those victims here and hopefully they can find a solution to recover this but to be honest guys at this point is really really difficult but let's continue in more suspicious news it was discovered that ftx chief regulatory officer daniel friedberg was also the lawyer for ultimate bet and absolute poker two companies that scammed users out of their money Friedberg seems to be putting his amazing cover-up skills to use again with FTX by helping SBF get away with fraud. Guys, all of this is just really painting a really bad picture for FTX. And then it says, and lastly, all FTX executives knew about everything. Who knows where this drama will go next? And honestly, you know, we're just starting off this week and anything can happen. More news can pop up. Um, so we just got to stay in the lookout. So make sure you guys subscribe into this channel if you guys want to get uh, more information about this, because as soon as I get more information, I'll be updating, um, you know, this part of the, uh, you know, this topic in this video um, and just sharing it with you guys so we can be more aware and do our due diligence before investing on anything. Now, let's finally get to the very end of this uh, medium, which is the big eyes take like we see here. And this is crazy, all right? So this is what they say. One terrible takeaway from this whole situation is that crypto morale is down. Yes, I agree. Following the crash of Luna, Celsius, and now FTX, faith in crypto has suffered too many blows. Yeah, I agree. That's why, <laughs> check this out, let me repeat it again. That's why big eyes believe that now is a time for pre-sales to shine. In light of this week's drama, the promise and potential of new, fresh coins on the market, like big eyes, is looking more appealing. <laughs> I just had to laugh. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I just find this to be very, very, uh, I mean, funny and sad, at, you know, like sweet and sour at the same time, because it's like they're trying to use, they're trying to say here that, yeah, we, you know, the mor crypto morale is down, crashing here and there, left and right, Luna, Celsius, FTX, people have suffered in crypto, but you know what? Now is the time for pre-sale. It's like they're using this situation to promote, you know, their pre-sales and their tokens. Now, I'm not saying that big guys is not legit, or they're a scam, or they're a rug pull, or anything along those lines. But what I am saying is that they should at least use this to do something different. Instead of trying to promote pre-sale, bring more awareness of the crypto market. Something of along the lines of, no matter where you put your money, nothing is safe in this world. It, you know, not only with like this big companies and cryptocurrencies, it could be banks. We have seen what happened in the Great Depression back in like the late uh, 1920s or 1930s. People lost faith in the banks and they had a bank run. People were lining up, trying to get their money out. And guess what? All those banks collapsed. We have seen what happened in 2008 with the housing marketing, you know, with the market, sorry, um, when all that stuff collapsed because they were just landing and landing, thinking they were like triple A trench, uh, tranches, uh, uh, you know, triple uh, A, triple B, whatever, and all, and it pretty much ended up being just, you know, a box of really, really bad uh, debts, you know, bad um, financial products, uh, you know, uh, loans and stuff that people were not paying, or they were approving these, uh, you know, housing, selling these houses with people that didn't even have any jobs, and it was just really, really bad. 
And so that's something that I would say, which now brings me to the end of this part. And this is my take. OK, so I share with you guys what big guys take is on all of this. But I'm going to share with you guys what is my take on all of this. OK, so my take on all of this is this. No matter where you decide to put your money, either Bank of America, Wells Fargo, FTX, Crypto.com, Wells Fargo, it doesn't matter. Nowhere is safe. Nowhere is 100 percent guarantee safe. But you might say, well, you know what? I'll just pull my money out of everywhere and I'll just keep it in my house in a safe and just lock it up and everything and everything is going to be safe. No, it's not because things can happen in your house. It could get burned down, um, you know, some inclement weather, some hurricane, tornadoes, earthquake, like anything can happen. So with all of this said, what I'm trying to get to the point is that no matter what we do, nowhere is safe, guys, no matter where you put your money or if you keep your money. You know, people back then used to put their money like uh, underneath their couch or mattresses and then bugs would end up eating it up because it's paper. And um, yeah, so nowhere is safe. Well, we get a focus is on where to mitigate loss. And the most important thing of all is and the most important thing is this, that to only invest what you're willing to lose. If you're putting money somewhere, okay, it could be a pre-sale, it could be a new business, it doesn't matter. But if you're gonna feel that if you lose, you're gonna feel bad, you're gonna you're gonna think twice, you're gonna have this sentiment of regret, then perhaps that's not the option for you. But if you were to invest uh, again in a new business and invest on real estate, you were to invest on a business, stocks, um, you know, you were to invest on bonds, um, you know, bonds are not really high risk. But the point is that if you were to risk on, on cryptocurrency, pre sales or anything, make sure that it's something that you're comfortable with. And that if you were to lose, because there's always that chance that it can go south, that you're not going to be affected mentally and emotionally. And that's the message of today, guys. I know this video was a little bit long, but I wanted, I kind of wanted to kind of cover this and kind of make this message, hopefully that it goes across to a lot of people. And that's pretty much it. So key takeaways, your money is nowhere to be safe, only invest what you're willing to lose and do your due diligence. And it, with that, I believe that we kind of, you know, we will be OK for the most part. There's always risk. And I believe that doing those things will mitigate a loss and especially keeping you intact, you know, keeping yourself composed, composure and not being affected by all this stuff, because, um, yeah, things can happen in life. And so we just got to be ready, prepared and look forward and guys to top it off okay as a little bonus thing from big guys this is what they say at the very end it says big guys offers a strong community to its users launching at 50 million dollars okay um, we aim to have an established community of supporters before we hit the ranks wait wait, wait. let me back up here it says launching at 50 million Let's go back to their website to see where they're at. Um, we see here that they have raised um, just below 10 million. So uh, and this is stage six. I don't know how many stages they're going to go, but if they want to launch until they reach 50 million, that's going to be quite a, that's going to be quite a long way to wait. Um, it says launching at 50 million. I don't know, guys, this is just crazy. Um, maybe they need to clarify here if they mean launching a 50 million or what do they mean by launching a 50 million? Um, that is just crazy because right now, based on their pre sale, they're just below 10 million. Let's say 10 million. Um, you know, in a few weeks or something, they reach that amount, or maybe in a, in a couple of days. But the point is that they still have 40 million dollars to go. That is just insane. Um, yeah, guys, share your thoughts. What do you guys think about all of this down below? Um, if you guys agree, disagree, what do you think about Big Eyes uh, Project? And also, especially, what do you guys think about the situation with FTX, everything that's going on? There's more stuff coming up to light as day progresses. This is an ongoing thing. And I'm... Um, uh, and share with you guys and share i'm sorry if you guys uh, were intrigued also by this article by, from big guys that out of all the rest like i mentioned tomododge impt token toon finance and a whole bunch of other ones as well they decided to make this you know to cover this on their medium so props to big guys for them to actually cover this and you know very very concise it's not that long and um, i'll have the link down below and you know again so you guys can go check it out so props for big guys for this and um yeah share your thoughts down below. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Check out my other videos and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.